Now time for oral questions. The member from Newmarket Aurora. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, uh, my question is to the Premier. In the wake of the uh, e-health scandal, the Premier gave his solemn commitment that he had put a stop to sole sourcing government contracts. He didn't say, unless it's convenient, he made a clear commitment all future government contracts would be put to competitive public tender. How does the Premier justify his government's approval of the recent multi-million dollar sole source contract for the purchase of train cars for the air rail link approved by the Metrolinx board as well as the Minister of Transportation? The Minister of Transportation. Speaker, and I, uh, I know the member opposite has um, has all the information on this uh, on this file because I have given him a, a letter that uh, was written by um, Coulter Osborne, who uh, laid out the uh, the details um, of the uh, of the deal, and and in fact said that it was a very reasonable choice for uh, for us to to make. So um, the fact is, Mr. Speaker, that Metrolinx is exercising a contract option from the Sonoma Marin Area Rapid Transit contract in California, which was an open competitive procurement process, and I've said in the House before, Mr. Speaker, that all of the uh, rules have been followed. It's not uncommon, as the former Minister of Transportation would know, yes. it's not uncommon for the, in the transportation industry to join another procurement process to get the best price possible, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Speaker, uh, we have a copy of that letter from Coulter Osborne. And it, in fact, confirms that Metrolinx did not issue a public tender. In fact, Mr. Osborne clearly states in his letter that it was the government's onerous time constraints on the project that made it impossible for Metrolinx to issue a public tender. According to Mr. Osborne's letter, Treasury Board and Cabinet authorized the sole sourcing of this contract by calling it an expedited procurement process. Speaker, call it what you will. There was no competitive bid. There was no public tender issued by this government on this multi-million dollar contract. The Premier and his cabinet may not care to know whether taxpayers are getting the best value for their dollar, but taxpayers do. Will he agree to order a public tender on this contract? Sure. Mr. Speaker, I first of all want to welcome the member opposite to the discussion of public transit because they have been markedly absent from that discussion for decades, really, Mr. Speaker. I just want to speak to, uh, to the issue of the open procurement. Um, Coulter Osborne, in his letter um, to Mr. Robert Siddle uh, of Metrolinx, uh, says that joining the smart procurement, which is the procurement that I just referenced, in this way seems to me to have been a no-risk decision that enabled Metrolinx to take advantage of a larger, similar vehicle procurement process in California that was open and competitive. As I said before, Mr. Speaker, it is not uncommon in the transportation industry when there are large purchases being made, when there has, been a, when there has been a procurement you know that, process in place, that another entity would tag on to that contract in order to get the best deal for the people of Ontario, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. Speaker the fact is it didn't need to be that way. Ontario could have done its own tender. The fact is that by imposing an artificial, unnecessary timeline onto this project, this government is essentially forced Metrolinx to abandon an open competitive bid process. All Canadian content rules were ignored. It took Cabinet to whitewash this sole source deal by calling it an expedited procurement process. This so that even the Fairness Commissioner, Coulter R. Osborne, is compelled to bless an offensive deal as being fair and in the public interest. Speaker, nothing is fair, nothing is in the public interest about a multi-million dollar company that excludes companies like Siemens from bidding on this contract. Will the Premier insist on ensuring that this contract is put to a public tender so that Ontario taxpayers know they're getting the best deal possible? Thank you, Minister. Sir, I think it's beneath even the member opposite to cast aspersions on the integrity of Coulter Osborne. I really think that that is absolutely outrageous. So let me just continue to read 
from his, uh, his recommendation on this. In addition, Mr. Speaker, he says, the fact that there are no commercially there are no commercially available DMUs in production in North American in North America militates in favour of acquiring DMUs under the umbrella of the Smart RFP. In my view, joining the Smart RFP, which is the uh, the deal that we uh, engaged in in the manner generally described above, was manifestly reasonable. In the end, it will provide Metrolinks with FRA compliant DMUs within a delivery time that meets on. Ontario's needs and at a highly competitive price, Mr. Speaker. That is why we engage in this. That is why Metrolinx worked with Sonoma. And I think it is beneath the member opposite to question that.